Hey everybody, I'm meteorologist Jacob Wyckoff. Each year, on average, 38 kids die from a heat stroke from being left in an unattended car, including 2013, where 20 kids have already passed away. With that in mind, and with the East Coast in what could be the hottest temperatures of the year, I thought it would be best to show some of those experiences. So, the plan is I'm gonna hop in my car, I'm gonna turn off the ignition, and we're gonna sit in there for 30 minutes. And along the way, I'll share some facts and I'll share my experience. Let's get started. All right, so I just started the timer. We're right at about one minute already. And the temperature is currently 92 degrees in the car. On the outside, it's 88. I left the car running for a little bit to kind of simulate a errand that a parent would be running. Um, so let's get this started and uh, we'll see how I feel in, in a few minutes. We just hit about the six minute mark and we're right about 100 degrees. So maybe a six to eight temperature degree rise over those five minutes. Uh, you can see sweat is already pulling on my head. Um, and I imagine that will significantly increase over the next uh, 25 minutes or so. Uh, just a general observation. I, when I got into my car, I already felt just the heat hit me, and it really hasn't stopped since. We are now approaching 10 minutes, and we have gone over the 100 degree mark. I'm looking, and it's about 105 uh, degrees. Um, you'll see that I'm starting to get soaked. Uh, my forehead and, and top of my head is completely drenched in sweat. And uh, one of the things that I noticed when I was doing some of this research uh, for this project is deaths from leaving kids in an unattended car can happen even at relatively mild temperatures. There have been deaths where kids have been left in a car when it's only 70 degrees out. But because of that rapid increase in temperature, um, it, it unfortunately causes them to have a heat stroke. Now approaching 15 minutes, uh, temperature right around 114 degrees. I have to be honest, uh, it's getting difficult to breathe in here. I don't know if it's just the stagnation of air or it's simply just me starting to develop uh, symptoms of a heat stroke, but uh, it is getting difficult to breathe in here. Um, one thing that uh, I also should mention is animals, they can sustain brain injuries and die from heat strokes in just 15 minutes. Um, the only way that they can try to beat the heat is through panting, specifically dogs, is through panting, um, and they only sweat from the, the pads of their feet. So when you leave a dog in the car, it's very difficult for them to sweat like I am uh, profusely. We've now hit the 20 minute mark. Temperature hovering right around 120 degrees. So since I've started in, in 20 minutes, it's gone up almost 30 degrees. Yeah, 30 degrees. Um, I'm uh, starting to get pretty miserable in the car, sweating profusely. But sweating is actually good. Uh, when I stop sweating is when it be would become uh, nerve-wracking because that's when you become dehydrated and your body can no longer cool itself as much as it like. Uh, heat strokes, they, they typically occur when the body's core temperature exceeds 104 degrees. Some of the symptoms that you may experience are dizziness, disorientation, confusion, um, loss of consciousness, obviously rapid heartbeat and even hallucinations. That's why sometimes when you see people in the desert, uh, they kind of see the mirages and that's kind of hallucinations that they'll get. When the core temperature starts to reach 107 degrees, that's when it's con considered lethal. And one thing to also consider is a child's thermoregulatory system is not as good as a human or as an adult <laughs> thermoregulatory system and their core temperature can heat up three to five times faster as a normal adult. We are now at the 25 minute mark. Temperature at 120 degrees. I am starting to get a little bit. One camera has already failed on me, uh, probably because it got too hot. Uh, hopefully my other cameras don't. So some people are asking me why do vehicles heat up 
so disproportionately faster than the outside. And that's basically because the atmosphere and the windows of cars are relatively transparent to shortwave radiation. And I have a video that's the shortwave radiation is the yellow uh, lines in the figure. Um, and, and the shortwave radiation doesn't really warm things that much. However, when shortwave radiation does strike an object that it hits, it does heat it up. For example, a dark dashboard or a seat can easily reach temperatures of 200 degrees. These objects uh, heat the adjacent air by conduction and convection, and they also give up long wave radiation, which is a very, very efficient source of heating the surrounding atmosphere. So we are now approaching the 30 minute mark. I have survived, so anyone that was concerned about me, I have survived. We approached 125 degrees in the car, uh, completely miserable. I'm drenched with sweat, you can see my shirt. I'm gonna be honest, this was uh, not the best idea that I've ever had, but hopefully it does encourage people to take the precautions that they need to, uh, to stay safe. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and exit my vehicle, and I'm going to take one last uh, blood pressure measurement uh, to see where my heart rate and my blood pressure stands. How do you feel? I feel gross. <laughs> I feel really gross. My final heart rate was 140, which is absolutely one of the symptoms of beginning to have a heat stroke. Um, thankfully, that's not going to happen as I'm able to step out into a 90 degree weather that's, that's cooling me dry. People wouldn't expect 90 degrees to cool someone down. You can make all the excuses you want. It's not that hot or I'm only going to be out for a second. But unless you're in the car too, your child or pet do not belong in that car. Since 1998, 581 children have died being left alone in unattended cars. A little phrase to remember, beat the heat, check the back seat. For now, I'm meteorologist Jacob Wyckoff. Stay cool and stay safe.